Hi, uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we in this lecture we are going to uh, further our understanding on microelectrode arrays. Uh, and uh, since we are going to acquire the signal from the brain, uh, we say that it is an implantable uh, microelectrode arrays. Uh, now, in the last lecture, we have seen that how the uh, device uh, that is a flexible in nature, right? Uh, that can we can fabricate using the micro fabrication technology and that device can be implanted uh, in the rat's brain uh, and then we can create an epilepsy by using convolutions like bicoquilin uh, followed by uh, using AEDs anti epileptic drugs to understand whether the drug is effective or not. And uh, uh, in this class we want to go for one uh, a different set of uh, uh, you know class of biomaterials. Uh, that are uh, not only biocompatible, anyway biomaterials should be biocompatible, bio, it should not have toxicity, uh, but we will be talking about bioreservable. That means that the material that can be absorbed when implanted into the human's body or animal's body per se. To do that, uh, we will be looking at how can we use that bioreservable material as a substrate and what kind of metal layers on the bioreservable material can be used that are biocompatible. And again we keep our focus on epilepsy so that because we have seen the le last lecture, so we do not really go into some other direction suddenly. Okay. So, keeping the epilepsy as a focus that means that we implant the uh, device onto the brain of the rat we acquire the signal, create an epileptic episodes and then measure those epileptic episode from 32 channels, use AED and see whether the baseline is recovered or not. Okay. So, if you see the slide, uh, we are talking about flexible biodegradable micro electrode array that is MEA for recording ECOG signals, ECOG stands for electrocardiography. So, what is the background, what are the research goals, what are the objectives and what is the novelty right. Always I told you that I am not just teaching you some lectures uh, from some traditional books, but what I am teaching you here is the application of what we understand right and this some of the things may not be available for uh, in the in the textbooks, but this is a part of the uh, cutting edge research technology uh, uh, in, in many labs right including uh, my lab here at IISC. So, uh, if you do not get exact same kind of content in the uh, books do not worry about it, but you will find lot of terms for example, ECOG, LFPs, local field potentials, right, uh, biodegradable, uh, temperature, pH, body fluids, uh, electrical simulation, right, animal models, uh, special temporal analysis uh, and, and, and many more. So, mo lot of things uh, you will find it, but how to apply it is what we want we are interested in, what kind of research problems we can generate and uh, or what are existing research problems and how we can generate the solutions. So, through the, in the background what we look at is through the traditional ECOG electrode arrays. Uh, so, though, though the uh, existing uh, electrodes which are the uh, ECOG electrodes uh, that can be used to study the activities from cortical surface, uh, it requires what requires traditional ECOG electrodes requires a secondary retrieval surgery which can create an additional trauma to the subject. Right. So, that is the first thing that we understood that okay, we can use the traditional one, but it, it requires a retrieval surgery because when you implant the device you need to uh, uh, retrieve it as well right before the surgeon can start operating the patient. So, now do understand from this perspective that if you implant the device now I told you about epilepsy and studying the drugs right, but the other area of the epilepsy is uh, intractable epilepsy. In intractable epilepsy, the, uh, the device has to be implanted onto the uh, uh, subject's brain and then the uh, bone is fused 
uh, as to chair back or whatever you want to say. Uh, it is, and then we need the, the doctor needs to uh, wait. Now, wh why I am using some basic word or non technical word is that because that is not what we need to understand. We need to understand that once a device is there, wha what is the difficulty with the existing devices. So, the existing devices once placed in the brain, uh, once we understand that where is the misfiring of signals or where exactly the uh, source of localization is there, we can take the device out when I say we as clinicians can take the device out and can resect that part of the tissue which is uh, causing the problem. Now, to do that like I said you implant it, wait till the episode occurs, you resect it right. So, you have to go for the retrieval surgery. Second is the arrays fabricated using transient materials can be used to fabricate the biodegradable material or uh, micro electrode arrays. Third one is these arrays will be degraded and dissolved in body fluids depending on temperature and pH right. Depending on the change in the temperature and the pH the material that we are using will get absorbed in the body all right. So, these are called biodegradable. Now, what I was saying earlier right now what we have seen is epilepsy. So, we, we implant the device in red's brain uh, create epilepsy apply AED 1 anti epileptic drug 1 and see whether the baseline is re recovered or not right that much we understand. But in uh, intractable epilepsy just administrating drug would not be enough. In that case, the brain has the skull has to be opened, the, the device has to be placed, and these are traditional devices, okay. And then it is kept back, and then you have to wait till that episode occurs. When the episode occurs, you again open it, take out the device, and then you resect that area which was which was misfiring. Now you do secondary retrieval, right? You have to retrieve means you have to take it out. But if the material itself that you are using for implantation it will dissolve after 10 days then you do not do retrieval surgery right. So, you can directly operate the patient by just putting that uh, the area that is causing the, uh, the episodes of epilepsy. So, to do this kind of stuff we have to use the materials which are biodegradable in, in, in nature and not just biodegradable, but bioresorbable. So, these arrays will be degraded and dissolved. Now, why it how it uh, dissolves? Dissolves in the uh, temperature depending on temperature and pH. Uh, the, the baseline LFPs, LFPs stands for local field potentials um, and LFPs during an induced seizure that means, when there is an episode and after recovery needs to be studied to understand the evoke response. So, this is the background. Now, let us see research goals. So, First of course, is we need to fabricate a device right. Then to induce epileptic activities by peripheral for po electrical simulation in red. The next is to record the baseline electrical activities with induced ictal and inter ictal discharges from a depth of a brain in an animal model ok. So, do understand now again let us repeat and understand instead of using the bicoagulant drug in this case we will be applying electrical simulation to create an epilepsy to create a seizure. Uh, the baseline needs to be recorded from the depth of the brain in an animal models. The spatio temporal analysis to determine the changes in electrical activities in different neurological conditions and distributions of signals across the depth that is another important research goal. And how we will uh, validate we can ob ob what are the objectives to validate a protocol to induce epileptic activities by using peripheral stimulation. The next is to fabricate a MEA to record LFPs. The next objective is implantation of the array in animal models that is here in this case we have read as an animal model. The last one is once you implant it you have to record and analyze the LFP signals in response to a convolucent or by uh, using the electrical simulation to cause the epilepsy. Convolucent also has the role to create an epilepsy and electrical simulation also can create epilepsy if you apply electrical simulation in the to the four power of the red. And then do the same thing which is study the if efficacy of the AEDs efficacy of the anti epileptic drugs for uh, uh, to understand the efficacy right. 
the last one which is novelty what is the novelty in this right one is a validation of purpose stimulation to induce under ketamine anesthesia in that right so uh, can you create an epilepsy in the uh, ketamine anesthesia when the rat is under ketamine anesthesia can you create an epilepsy by applying electrical stimulation to the forpo of the rat the fabrication of bio de biodegradable array will be used to study the electrical signatures in normal epileptic and recovered conditions right uh, finally the open bci system dc biosensing board was used or is will be used for in vitro uh, reading or recording from the red spray so now let us understand the uh, experimental methodology okay what are the experimental methodology first you what you see here there is a tablet right this is a dongle for bluetooth this is the dong uh, this is the open bci cyton board uh, uh, and then the data is transmitted through the bluetooth right to your system within the tab you will be able to see the recorded eeg or in in this case we because we are taking the signals from the brain it is elect electrocardiography or ecog this is an electronic module to apply electrical stimulation this is a pcb printed circuit board connected to the uh, cyton daisy board now let us con concentrate on this area there are ear bars pcb with implanted mea there is a adapter to the right here wire electrodes connected to the forpo of the right so the this is the schematic of the experimental setup for recording ecog signals using flexible biodegradable micro electrode array right so uh, this is the experimental methodology now we have to perform the experiments uh, in the similar manner so let us start looking into it the first and foremost is we have to fabricate a flexible biodegradable micro electrode array in this case how, how what is the device the device is this one how many what is the length length is 26 millimeter what is the width the width is 5.36 millimeter this width okay and the length is anyway here when you zoom in the area of our interest where the recording electrodes are placed that area from the bottom of the bottom electrode to the top of the top electrode is the length is given right is how much 3.3 millimeter by 2.04 millimeter 3.3 millimeter by 2.04 millimeter that means that uh, we can have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 electrodes at max number of electrodes are 10 electrodes okay and this will be on the flexible substrate as you can see here so now let us uh, understand how we can fabricate this device but before we understand fabrication of the device let us also see the uh, images that we obtain from the SEM these are SEM images scanning electron microscopy so biodegradable material MEA for recording ECOG schematic of MEA which is in the inset uh, process slope for fabricated uh, the biodegradable material uh, which is this process flow here right so the A which is this one is the process flow right B to H is process flow and A is the schematic of the MEA so the B would be glass wafer this is a glass wafer spin coating of PLL A colon PCL in 80 to 20 ratio 
E is dioxane to form a film. Okay. So, that means that the glass wafer after glass wafer which is C the spin coating of this particular material which is your PLLA is to PCL in the bracket 80 is to 20 bracket over solution in dioxane to form a film. The next one which is D. So, C, C, B is done, B is done and then you have C, C is also done. So, let us just write down here, yes, this is yes. Next one is D, in D what we do? In D we have metal tungsten of thickness 500 nanometer, deposition through shadow mask metal mask. That is why? Because uh, we do not have to do the lithography if there is already tungsten. Uh, that can be deposited onto a uh, substrates like X, Y, Z, like glass, like silicon, anything. Okay. So the D um, is the metal deposition, and then we followed by E, which is spin coating of PLLA PCL again to form an insulating layer, followed by patterning of opening windows uh, at the electrodes and contact pads. Finally, plasma etching of polymer film to define the boundary followed by peeling of fabricated microelectrode array and the substrate. Uh, the photograph of the fabricated MEA wrapped around a glass cylinder and SEM image of the recording electrodes are shown in this particular figure. All right. So, you can see that the uh, G shows the actual photograph and H shows the SEM image the electrodes which are not shiny are conductive. So, this is conductive. So, now what we do is let us understand the process flow. Okay. And the process flow, I am really sorry. Let us see. Sometimes what happens is that we get too much into the thought process and we forget that what we are talking, right. So, here we are looking at the micro electrode array and we have to understand the process flow. Now, I have just told you what are these, okay, but do not worry about how to use it, we will, we will now use it. So, the first one is glass wafer, you see glass wafer, all right. So, glass wafer followed by a material, right, to form a film. So, we will draw a film. So, let us go to the fabrication process and it is very simple because we have to just design the electrodes. So, you take the glass wafer. Then on this glass wafer, Right, we have spin coated the soft material, cure it, whatever the process is. The next step in this one would be Okay, because you see here we have oh in this case it is not uh, gold, in this case it is tungsten right, it is tungsten. Tungsten, hmm? because tungsten is bioreservable, that is why tungsten. After this you need to pattern it right, you see here we have to pattern it, is not it. So, for patterning what we will do, we all know right what we need to do, but some of you may have forgotten. So, I will draw for you. This is your flexible substrate.
this is your titanium sorry tungsten tungsten on tungsten ok. So, so, in this case what happens is there are two ways ok I will just show it to you and let, let me draw the traditional way. Okay, positive photoresist, right? We have coated the positive photoresist and then soft bake it at 90 degrees centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate. Once you do that, the next step is you all know what is the next step? Mask, right? And then mask you have to expose with UV light. So, what are the patterns on the mask? The patterns of the mask are following. Okay. So, what we what we have here is bright field mask and this one is your UV light. So, with the help of UV light you will expose the photoresist expose the photoresist with UV light uh, and between there is a mask. So, since it is positive photoresist the same pattern will transfer on to the photoresist or in another, another way we can say that the area which is not exposed ok and what are this? Okay, this is glass. So, what we are doing here is that we have flexible material. You have metal which is tungsten, you have positive photoresist and positive photoresist is protected in the area or pattern such that the unexposed region became stronger in the mask and now we have also edge tungsten right that is how it is no. See if I want to have one more step I can show it to you like this. is not it? This is how it is no. So, if I dip this wafer after after patterning posi positive photo resist right what is the next step developing it and then post baking it right. So, post bake post baking at 120 degree centigrade or on hot plate right for 1 minute. After this you dip this wafer in tungsten agent. And when you do that, what you get is
okay this is what we will have after when you when you dip the wafer in uh, tungsten h what you will have is the tungsten will get h in the area which was not protected by the photoresist and the area which is protected by the photoresist photoresist is still there next step after this dip the wafer in acetone if i dip a wafer in acetone then what will i have titanium right what will happen that when you dip the wafer in acetone the photoresist will get stripped off and you will have your pattern you see this pattern this one c from b to c these are the processes all right now let me show you an alternative process or alternative trick okay so if you want to pattern this gold as you can see here in the circle right what you need to do once you have this one okay you can create a mask like this okay which is cut through what is cut through i will just show it to you cut through i will just give you one example okay So, the white region this one is cut through you got it. Now, if I directly deposit material that means that if I take my flexible material is there and now what we need to do is on this flex material you load the mask ok. So, if I take the cross section of this mask then it will look like something like this ok and through this mask the next step would be so you can you can you can uh, uh, load this mask which is this one a after this you directly okay this is a stencil mask you can directly use this in rf or e beam sputtering RF or E beam sputtering uh, or RF or E beam evaporation or sputtering. Okay. So, what we have here is that we have a flex material on which there is a tungsten metal with very fine feature size and it can defi definitely stick on the uh, flexible material. After this, what you will have is so after this particular process if I remove the mask what I will have you know ok. So, you again got the same thing that you got here can you see this right. So, this is after that you just load the 
mask uh, and deposit the wafer and you will have I am just giving example okay there can be many uh, because can cross section can be like this can be like this it does not matter. So, this is an easy way to do it right because it is a soft lithography this is a conventional of do, uh, way of doing lithography both have a differences. So, what I was thinking is that if you have a flexible material with tungsten uh, as a next step that means that you have patented tungsten as you can see here right you can you have this uh, PLL in uh, PLL A and PCL mixture uh, it is to 20 on the glass and then you deposit directly patent the gold using the stencil mask or thorough mask. After this step the next step is so I will just uh, uh, remove it okay so that we can quickly write it down what is the next step. The next step is to again coat the PLLA and PCL why because PLA PCL is not just a substrate but can also work as an insulating material does not just work as a substrate but also acts as an insulating material ok. So, let us use our spin coat PLLA and PLA PCL right. So, now what we have we have fabricated a device on a glass substrate with this as PLLA PCL 8020 ratio correct PLLA PCL 8020 ratio. On this we have our tungsten electrodes that everybody knows how we can create either lift off technique or by conventional lithography. On this tungsten electrode I will again have PLLA and PSS ok this I am drawing like this just to make it easy ok. And then I will open I will open the windows such that I can access the contact area right what I what I am doing here if you see this particular uh, image right in this electrodes right this electrodes are patterned then you have this uh, PLLA PCL coated on those electrodes and then we will open the contact only in this region you see here. And in this region 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 this black color contact pads only from black color contact pads and the electrode that is recording electrode right we remove the PLLA PCL. How can we do that? We have to open the contact you can see here very clearly right it is uh, this are this is the this one is PLLA PCL and the this one is tungsten tungsten ok. So, from from D we have reached to E and now we have to open the contact pads and recording electrode pads. So, we have to do perform the lithography and for that we can spin code the positive photoresist perform soft bake followed by loading the mask and this mask should open the area from the contact pad and from the recording electrodes from the contact pad and from the recording electrodes. So, in a way we can if the positive photo resist is there we can use a dark field mask
See, what kind of mask is this? It's a dark film mask. Correct? Dark film mask. Dark filled mask. And then you have UV exposure. This is your glass. All right. When you do this, is a positive photoresist. So whatever the pattern is there, same pattern will come. And what will I have, or what we can have? We can have a beautiful PLLA as a uh, PCL as a substrate. This is supporting substrate is glass. On this, we'll have tungsten electrodes, right? And then this this second PLLA PCL. On that, we have photoresist. Okay, and let's show the photoresist by dots. This is my positive photoresist. After exposure, when you develop the photoresist, right, the area which is not exposed becomes stronger because it is positive photoresist, or the same pattern that is in the mask will appear on the wafer that you can see very clearly that the area which was uh, not exposed got stronger, the area which is exposed got weaker, right. After this, uh, we will go for a uh, post bake 120 degrees centigrade. 1 minute on hot plate. All right, this is easy, everyone. Good. But after this, what is the step? After this step is that we have to etch the PLLA PCL from these regions. Okay. And this is my positive photoresist. And these are tungsten. tungsten. All right. So, if I edge PLLA PCL uh, from the area which is not protected using etching technique, then what will I have? I would have tungsten PLLA PCL and glass all right easy because uh, only the region which is protected by the photoresist right like this one the PLLA PCL will stay the region which was not protected by photoresist this will get etched as you can see here. correct because it is a positive photoresist because that area which is not protected by photoresist will get etch in the uh, PLA PCL etching. Uh, and now after this once it is done we can dip the wafer in acetone.
if I dip the wafer in acetone what will happen? My photoresist will get etched. photoresist will get etched. So, now I have my tungsten right everywhere like this. So, where are we? We have reached here where the this one where the P L L A P C L is etched from the contact electrodes which is this electrodes and from the recording electrodes which are this electrodes remaining everywhere there is an insulating material. Then last step is last step is that you go for the uh, plasma etching right F is plasma etching a polymer film to define boundary by peeling of the fabricated microelectrode array. So, you can peel off the electrode array to be utilized for the experiments or for the implantation all right. So, what we have seen is we have seen how can we fabricate this microelectrode array for implantation right and once you have the microelectrode array now the next step is that how we will implant it in the red spring. So, the these are the steps right that we have to understand how to use it uh, to to add to attach the microelectrode array we have uh, a PCB for interfacing the fabricated arrays which is here right and then PCB uh, for fabricating open BCI set on boards uh, which is this one B. Uh, uh, a signal equation systems, right. So, these are the PCBs that we have uh, designed developed here. We have to characterize this uh, microelectrode array. So, you perform this uh, impedance uh, measurement uh, from 0 to uh, 1 megahertz and uh, uh, what you will find is that the, uh, the 9 constitutive electrode pairs we need to understand how the impedance is varying across different frequency. Uh, however, the normalized impedance should not change much when we bend the uh, electrodes or bend the device many times it is a flexible device right. So, the impedance of the electrode should not change too often uh, uh, when you are going for higher number of bending or at, until at least 450 500 times you can use this uh, device ok. Now, what did I say? I have said that this is a bioresorbable device that means that if I if I have the device in pH of 7.4 the A 1 here is a complete device intact ok after immersion after you immerse it in pH 7.4. Second is dissolution of the encapsulant layer of the immersed uh, MEA after 17 hours you can see here the dissolution of the encapsulating layer. Dissolution of the electrodes after 21 hours you see electrodes are dissolving these are electrodes in contact after 22 hours everything is dissolved right. The instance of the magnified view is the recording electrode array here, here is a recording array, here is a recording array, here is a recording array, here is a recording array from uh, immersion to 17 to 22 right you can see that the electrodes are gone. And if you keep this device for longer time this device will be completely dissolved or absorbed dissolved right uh, it is a, it's a uh, uh, bioresorbable, so it will resorb in the uh, pH 7.4. So, let us uh, uh, see that how we are going to perform the uh, red experiments. You can see here the red brain is open and then you implant the device onto the red brain and suture it back. Now, you have PCB attached to the microelectrode array which you can see here the microelectrode array has been implanted in the red's brain ok. Once you do that you let the red recover right and uh, then once the red is recovered uh, it can freely move and then you start the experiment part. So, the A is anatomy of N is red here uh, to expose the somatosensory cortex this is the region where we implant the device on the red hemisphere. The next one is the sedated red after implantation of flexible biodegradable array and the needle electrodes are connected to left for PO. You can see that the needle electrodes are connected here right um, and finally, the free moving red is here ok. So, we will see uh, how to utilize uh, each one during this uh, anesthesia are we going to measure anything 
or once the red is recovered completely, uh, how we are going to measure the signals. Okay. So, uh, what I will do, uh, what we will do is I will show you the uh, way the surgery is done uh, in the next class and uh, we will also see that once you implant the device, how can you create the epilepsy and when you create the epilepsy, how the signals will look like. Okay. So, uh, I think it is a lot of things that we have uh, been uh, learning in this particular class. So, uh, let us uh, do the final leg of this particular lecture and then we will stop. Okay. So, since you have implanted a device and that you have sutured it back and you have PCB attached fixed with dental cement and the rat is happy, then what the signals looks like, right. So, these are the baseline signals as you can see that uh, 60 micro volts is a y axis, 10 seconds data is a baseline signal which are your ECOG uh, signals, okay. Now, you can see that from all 10 channels we are able to find out the uh, ECOG or acquire the ECOG signals. That means, all 10 channels should be touching the uh, uh, touching the brain surface. In this case, what you see is that now we are looking at the recorded ECOG electrodes, recorded electrocardiography signals and for this one we have created an epilepsy. As you can see that the signals amplitude is now 400 milliseconds, uh, sorry 400 uh, micro volts. Again the uh, readings are for 10 seconds and this is epileptic zone uh, because these are the burst of signals as you can see right almost kind of uniform uh, at se in several channels is not it. Uh, so, uh, this is another thing uh, of importance that we need to understand. We can create epilepsy by applying the electrical simulation on the forepo of the red that is why we have needle electrodes on the forepo of the uh, red and then when you apply electrical simulation that creates this uh, burst of signals which are the epileptic uh, ep epileptograms and then we induce or we administer uh, anti epileptic drug. When we do that what we can see is that now it is 60 micro volts. So, we have kind of recovered the baseline right Reco you can see this one, but still it is within 100 micro volts if there is a change only like uh, uh, within 60 actually see from here to here is 60. So, it is just like 30 micro volts. Okay. So, uh, we do not have to worry about this uh, little bit of spikes of course, we need to understand if it is very high like this one which is about 400 micro volts why it is happening that means that the uh, AD is not too effective. Okay. The AD is not too effective. So, when you perform the time frequency analysis uh, the baseline uh, uh, here from, from minus 20 to 20 here you can see that minus 200 to 150 here is minus 30 to 30 and for uh, 10 seconds of data when we plot it uh, from minus 200 to 200 you can very clearly see the epileptic episode here it is not there here it is not here. But when we when we plot the power spectrum analysis with respect to the frequency, you can very clearly see that uh, the the uh, dip for every uh, thing is about uh, in the in the dB is at least 20 dB, uh, uh, you know, for each each frequency range, right? From 20 to 40, you can see 40 to 60. So it's kind of a dipping like this, okay? And finally, this dip. Same thing goes here and same thing when you are uh, administering the uh, AED. So, from this, uh, this uh, frequency time analysis what we can see that uh, in the initial stage you cannot see many yellow color uh, spectra right. In this case you can very clearly see and here again it is kind of recovering back. So, uh, one thing is that we have now uh, a, a bioresorbable micro electrode array uh, and we have we have 10 electrodes for recording all these electrodes along with the array is implanted into the red's brain we can apply electrical simulation to the forepo of the red's brain create an epilepsy as you can see here apply or administer an anti epileptic drug and you can see that the baseline is recovered okay so this is the uh, slide uh, we can also record the evoke potentials uh, so, amplitude of your potentials at 80 micro volts one second these are the signals. So, recording of somatosensory evoke potentials by implanted MEA for a free moving rate when the rate is free moving then you can uh, uh, find out this somatosensory uh, from the cortex uh, by touching the left whiskers uh, when you touch the left whiskers immediately you will find out the uh, change in the signals uh, from the somatosensory 
uh, cortex and these are called uh, evoke response. These are in some microvolts range for each channel number and the microvolts is about 80 microvolts as a y axis and it is for uh, uh, 0 to 10 seconds. So, for 10 seconds data we are showing it to you in this particular slide. This is chronic recording that means that uh, uh, on day 3 post surgery, on day 6 post surgery uh, you can see that slowly and gradually the device is not able to faithfully recover the signal. The reason because the device is starting, the electrodes are starting to be absorbed or bio reserved on the web brain. So, when that happens the uh, signal acquisition capacity of the electrodes will reduce and so you cannot see uh, uh, any, any uh, e ECOG signals. It is still 660 microvolts. Here you can very clearly see, right? Here also you can see, but at day day six uh, post surgery, the electrodes are dissolving. Mm. Now the one very fundamental question would be why, in the case of uh, uh, X, uh, the in vitro analysis, uh, only in 22 hours you were able to see that dissolving, while in the brain it takes so long time because the pH, the the CSF is not in continuous touch with this electrodes okay is not continuously it's not dipped okay so it, it takes some time for for uh, bioresorbing inside the brain now these are the histology images uh, uh, from the rat's brain and uh, some of the vital organs of the uh, rat after chronic experiments uh, this slide with uh, crystal violet stained brain section is shown in a1 uh, which is your a here right uh, then magnified uh, image of the brain section captured by optical microscope for studying the tissue damage is shown here right. Then we have a magnified image of the section of liver, this is liver, then kidney, then heart, then lungs, small intestine, large intestine. Okay. So, these are some of the uh, organs, uh, uh, histology images from the organs. This is to understand whether the uh, device that is absorbed in the body, it is dissolved biodegradable. So, it is dissolved in the, in the certain part of the uh, body where it is implanted. Is it toxic and is it creating any problem in other parts of the body, other, other vital organs are affected or not. So, we have to perform a histology study to understand whether these organs are affected or not uh, and this actual experiment should be for 1, 2, 2 to 3 months to actually understand how uh, this uh, uh, the effect of these bioreserved materials on to the different vital organs. So, let us stop it here uh, what we have seen right, what we have seen is that uh, if we have a microelectrode array uh, and that too made up of the bioreserved material like PLLA, uh, P, uh, PL, P, uh, PCL uh, in 80 to 20 ratio and then we have a material like tungsten, tungsten is also bioreservable. Then you can have a biodegradable implantable MEA microelectrode array that can be used for uh, understanding the efficacy of AED. In next uh, lecture, we will understand how the micro electrode or a needle electrode can be designed to be implanted in the rat's brain and get some signals out of it. Okay. So, till then if you have any questions feel free to ask me through forum. Uh, we have updated all the uh, questions asked by answering to them, uh, but if you have more questions feel free to send more questions. Uh, I hope you are understanding the, the next stage of the uh, usage of the implantable devices in acquiring signal. Now, we are just here to uh, until now what we have seen is just to acquire the signal. What about if we apply electrical stimulation and then acquire signal right. So, it is a it is a it is a advanced version right and that is what the course is all about. So, we started very basic things if you really understand and go back and see we just started with silicon, our thermal oxidation techniques, lithography, PVD, CVD, micro machining um, and then uh, we have seen that how flexible sensors are fabricated. Then we deep dived in and then understood biopotentials, then we further understood what are the uh, different signals uh, among that EEG is what we are interested in, how the EEG is generated, what is ECOG. And then we have also further understand that okay, if you understand EEG, we can use to identify types of epilepsy. Then we further went, uh, uh, you know, went in or dived deep in, uh, dived in 
and, uh, and, and uh, what we understood? We understood that now if you know uh, that how the epileptic episodes are there, can we use this device to uh, understand the efficacy of AEDs. Then why to again uh, uh, do the uh, retrieval surgery, right? We are, what about we implant it and it is absorbed it. So, here we are, we are talking about the bioreservable implantable MEA. Now, going forward, we will look at the micro needle that can go in the cortical column. We have cortex, cortical cortex is made of cortical arrays, and each uh, array, right, is a is a group of cortical columns. Each cortical column has six layers, and how we can tap the signals from all these layers. So, we'll look into this in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye.